So I'm gonna start by coming over to my command prompt and I'm gonna create um, a new console app by saying .NET new console dash O and then graph console app. So this is gonna use the .NET CLI to create the new project. Now that that's created, there's a few things that we're gonna need inside of our app, a few NuGet packages. So I'm gonna use the .NET CLI to continue uh, adding NuGet packages by saying add package microsoft.identity.client for the MSAL library. I'm then gonna use, uh, install the Microsoft Graph.NET uh, SDK. I'm then gonna install a couple extensions to read a configuration file. So we'll do extensions.configuration, configuration.file extensions, and then we have one more that we need to install for JSON files. Now let's go ahead and let's launch our project in VS Code. All right, so now our project's been set up. If you get a prompt about installing additional things for your project, go ahead and accept that. Uh, as you see, I just got it here. It's gonna install additional um, extensions and packages that you may need in your project once it detected it was a, a .NET project. All right, so now the next thing I need to do is I need to create a new file here that's gonna hold the settings for my app. So I'm gonna create an app settings.json file. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in this code here. And notice here we have a tenant ID, an application ID, the secret, and the redirect URI. So I'm gonna go fetch all that information from uh, the other um, uh, text file that we had created to keep track of all that stuff that you see right here. So I'm gonna grab the application ID that goes right here. I'm gonna grab the tenant ID that goes here. And I'm gonna grab the secret that goes right here. There we go, so we got all all three of the settings are now set up for our application. We're gonna need a couple helper classes as well to make our lives a little bit easier. So I'm gonna create a new folder called helpers. And then within this folder, I'm gonna create a new file called my auth helper.cs. I'm going to paste this in. Let's take a look and see what this does. This is defining a new auth handler that's allowing me to pass in an authentication provider and a message handler. And then when I wanna submit a task of sending a task or sending a command um, asynchronously, it's gonna take the request that I'm sending and it's going to add on um, a cancellation token as part of that request, but it's also gonna authenticate um, the request uh, first to obtain the access token. Um, that access token is then gonna get added to the request object for every single request that we make uh, to make sure that everything is gonna be authenticated. The next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna create a helper um, that's, or a provider that's gonna help me in working with uh, the Microsoft Authentication Library. So I'm gonna create a new file called the MSAL Authentication Provider.cs. Provider.cs, and I'll paste that in. All right, so now what this file is doing is it's going to uh, define our authenticated request that's gonna go fetch a token asynchronously and then it's gonna attach that to the headers collection as an authorization property, and then it'll include that token as you can see here. Um, so this is the one I was telling you we were in the last file we were looking at the auth helper. This is the method that's gonna get called. When it's calling the auth token, what that's doing is that's using a client application that you see is also passed in, and it's gonna call the acquire token for client and also specify all the permissions that, it want, that we wanna get the um, permissions for uh, that need to be included in that access token. And then it's gonna go return that access token back, which is what we're getting up here, and then setting it to the request headers for all the requests uh, that are being made. All right, now let's go back to our project. So I'm gonna come over here to program.cs, and I'm gonna add a few using statements at the top to make our lives a little bit easier to get access to the authentication library, Microsoft Graph, reading configuration files, and the helpers um, that we just added. Now I'm gonna add a uh, member here, a private member called the graph service client. This is being defined in the Microsoft.graph namespace and I'll just call this graph client like you see here. Now the next thing we need is we need a process to go load all the settings from that app settings file. So I'm gonna add another method to our project here. 
called load settings. All this load settings method does is it just reads in our application JSON file and it makes sure that all these other values are set. And if they're not set, then it will throw an exception um, as we'll definitely be having a problem uh, because things we definitely need that in order for things to work. Now, the next thing we're gonna need is a way to uh, get an authorization provider or to create an authorization provider. So I'm gonna add another method down here. And what this method is going to do for creating an authorization provider is it's gonna use those configuration values to create a reference to the authority of where we're gonna authenticate. And then it's going to create a new confidential client application. That's something that's defined uh, inside of the um, Microsoft authentication library. And I'm specifying what the client is for, what the redirect URI is, the authority, the client secret, etc. So I'm getting all that stuff and I'm gonna return the authentication provider with the client, um, the confidential client, and a list of all the permissions. In this case here, we're just using the default permission uh, for when we want to um, get access to, or we get an instance of our authorization provider. Now, the next thing that I need is I want to go get a reference to the Microsoft Graph client or an authenticated instance of it. So I'm gonna create another method here. And what this one's gonna do is the get authenticated graph client is going to return a instance of a graph client. I'm passing in a configuration object that's gonna create the authorization provider that you see passed above us. So there's my authentication provider. And I'm then gonna to go to my graph service client and pass in that authentication provider to get an instance of the graph client that's been fully configured. Inside of the main method, I'm gonna replace this console with a call to load the settings from the configuration file. Once I've done that, the next thing I wanna do is I want to obtain uh, an instance or reference uh, to our authenticated uh, graph client. So I'm going to add that right after this line right here. So this is going to get an instance of our authenticated graph client. It's then going to create and uh, go make a request for all the users in our organization. And then it's gonna call get async to get the all the results. And then it's gonna walk through and write all the results uh, of, the, um, of the request uh, to the console. So now we can go test our application. So I'm gonna open up my console and I'm gonna start by making sure that I've installed and trusted all the developer certs for .NET. So I'm gonna select .NET, dev certs, HTTPS, trust. And that's gonna prompt me to enter in my uh, local workstation's password. Okay, so everything's all trusted, so we're in good shape. So let's give ourselves a little bit more room so we can see the results that come back. I'm gonna run .NET build, followed by .NET run. There's oh, one D. When the application runs, it should show us a list of all the users in our organization. And what's special about this is that I've um, fetched all the users using an application permission, which as you notice, I didn't have to log in as a user. Um, instead, it was using the client ID and the client secret to log in uh, to Azure AD and obtain an access token that it can be used to call uh, Microsoft uh, Graph.